Now, here's another fun one. Double-stranded RNA already being deployed in apples and potatoes near you. These apples and potatoes form a very important task. They don't turn brown when you slice them. So they lie about their age, like the Botox apple. You can cut it, it can shrivel, but it'll never turn brown. Now, what they do is they put in a gene that produces a little piece of RNA that folds back on itself and becomes double-stranded. It's very short, maybe 22 nucleotides, and its code will then, as if, hunt for a matching code in the DNA of the apple. And when it finds it, it silences the expression of that particular gene. So it's gene silencing technology. It's one of the things that RNA does. Surprise, no one knew 30 years ago. Now, could that be impactful on humans? Well, we know that when they fed honeybees one meal of double-stranded RNA, they chose the double-stranded RNA from something that was completely foreign to the honeybee, so they wanted it to use it as a control. They were looking for something that had no impact whatsoever. And they checked the gene expression twice, a few weeks later and a few weeks later. And they found that over 1,400 genes had changed their levels of expression. About 10% of the genome of the honeybee was altered in its functioning because of a single meal of double-stranded RNA. They know that it, humans can eat double-stranded RNA and it can affect and change our gene expression. RNA is one of the ways that we get intelligence from our food. It's not just minerals and proteins and phytochemicals. The RNA can help tell our DNA how to express. They've changed uh, gene expression in mice through double-stranded RNA. So if you eat the apple or the potato, what will happen when that double-stranded RNA finds a match in your genome? It might reprogram it. And this was the warning of a USDA scientist who published an article, much to the chagrin of his, of his superiors, and he's no longer at the USDA. I interviewed him. And his point was, we have no way to evaluate the risks. Because all these different organisms out in the nature, including humans, could eat the apple. He wasn't talking specifically about the apple, but eat anything that's using the double-stranded RNA, and it can change their gene expression. The EPA scientist came out with a similar article, not on GMO organisms that use RNA, but on sprays. Monsanto got approved a spray that kills bugs by changing their gene expression. And imagine if the wind blows and it lands on you. What happens with this mysterious rash? Who knew? And they have used an interesting double standard saying, oh, it couldn't possibly affect us. It doesn't affect through different species. And yet somehow we use it as an insecticide so it actually kills different species. So it works where we want it to and it doesn't work where we don't want it to. That's their, their theory. Oops. Now, changes in RNA turn out to be inheritable as well. Epigenetics. It's not just the genes that are passed down, but also the mechanism that tells which genes to express. And this has unfortunately been discovered by a scientist that injected Roundup into mice. And 90% of the great-grandchildren had serious diseases. And they was more serious than the grandchildren. The children were fine, and the injected pregnant mouse was fine, and mice. But the great-grandchildren had it worse. 90% had prostate, kidney, prostate and kidney disease, obesity, and deaths during pregnancy. If you want to know more details, please like our Facebook, Institute for Responsible Technology, and go back to an interview I did with Dr. Skinner, 
I speak with him for 45 minutes. He is the scientist that did this research. And it's astounding. He thinks we're already suffering from the DDT exposure of our parents. And the obesity, he thinks, is in part due to the results of this epigenetic effect of previous chemicals.